Hey YouTube, Bob here. Got a package in the mail from Japan today, so I figured I'd open it up and show you what it is. Looks like we got uh, the box inside uh, an EMS uh, padded mailer, so I'll get the uh, padded mailer open first. Let's see if this uh, seller included any gifts, as uh, some Japanese sellers do. We got inside, got the box. So judging from the size of this box, uh, I'm guessing there, there aren't going to be any uh, other special gifts. But uh, as I always say, as long as uh, what I ordered is in the package and not damaged, that's all that really matters. So let's take a look. There we go. There's a little bit of it. And get the rest. And ta da! Looks like a car in a small box. And uh, it's a car because it's a racing game. So we'll take. Oh wow! Interesting. This uh, this particular seller appears to have access to a uh, a crimping machine. It actually uh, heats the heats the bubble wrap here and creates a seal around it. So this is like a custom sealed uh, bubble, wrap, uh, bubble wrap bag, which is pretty cool. So, get this open, and upon further unboxing, we notice that it's a Famicom game. And if we take a look on the left, in English it says Highway Star, Highway Suta, and uh, this is a, uh, a racing game for the Famicom. And it's a fun racing game. The music is really good. Uh, actually, this is a very unique racing game in that your car actually has a stereo in it. And uh, you can change the station on the stereo, so to speak, by hitting up or down on the, uh, on the control pad. And uh, this is one of the cars uh, that you can choose from, which is a Ferrari. You can also choose uh, from an F1 racer. And your goal in this game is to uh, go around the tracks and hit various checkpoints uh, before time runs out. And uh, if, I guess, well, the checkpoints, the Ferrari, the F1 racer, and the changeable radio station sound familiar to you, well, that is because Highway Star is the... Japanese version of what we got here in the United States and I think in Europe known as Rad Racer. And it is a racing game for the Famicom and the NES uh, made by Squaresoft. And uh, this was uh, to be Nintendo's answer to Sega's OutRun game uh, that they had on the Master System. And uh, given that there weren't too many racers on the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Famicom at that time, um, uh, this was actually pretty popular, uh, although there were some criticisms against it that um, it was very similar to OutRun. So if we take a look, we're actually going to compare it, Highway Star that is, to its U.S. counterpart, which is Rad Racer. We take a look, they went uh, for a very different uh, box design. Take a look at the back. Just text on the back of the Japanese one, but as in typical fashion, both text and uh, screenshots on the U.S. version. So let's take a look and see what it says here. Feel the awesome power of 3D rally racing. This is no ordinary game pack. This is Rad Racer, Nintendo's thrilling 3D, ga uh, 3D video game. Rad Racer comes action-packed with revolutionary 3D technology and 3D glasses. They're free inside, and that will have you really believing you're in the middle of a cross-country rally race, cruising along at 200 miles per hour. Rad Racer takes you through eight treacherous race courses, including the Los Angeles Nightway, the San Francisco Highway, and the Grand Canyon. Choose the Ferrari and you'll enter a super machine competition while you race against Corvettes and Lamborghinis. Select the F1 machine and you'll compete against incredibly fast cars. Whether it's Ferrari or F1, 3D regular mode, Rad Racer's hairpin curves, daredevil turns, and realistic action will bring home the fun and excitement of real rally racing. Think you're up to it? Then drivers, start your engines. It's Rad Racer. So you can see the screenshots here. And look for your 3D glasses inside. Copyright 1987 Square. So, this is the US version. We'll take a look at this one first. Released in 1987 by Square. Open it up. 
We have our game pack in its baggie, and right away we can see the 3D glasses that we get with it. These are your typical, uh, I believe they're called anaglyph or anaglyphic uh, 3D glasses, where uh, different parts of the image are outlined in red, others in blue, and that makes it so that they reach uh, the intended eye, either left or right, at the appropriate moment. And somehow, I'm not exactly sure how that works, it creates the illusion of a 3D image. And uh, these 3D glasses are made out of plastic, so they're a uh, step up over the uh, white paper 3D glasses. Uh, but they're still pretty, they're pretty much on the cheap side. And they have these flaps here. I have a feeling that uh, these flaps are to clip over the uh, arms of uh, the glasses of any player who's going to be wearing their own eyeglasses while playing. So that's kind of a nice feature. So those are the anaglyphic, I believe, 3D glasses that come with Rad Racer. This is the uh, typical poster, either Nintendo Game Plan or Now You're Playing With Power. Screenshots of some typical games. This is the Now You're Playing With Power version. I actually have uh, two versions of the instruction manual in here. You'll notice that one of them actually matches the kind of teal silver color of the box. And then this is another one uh, that just uh, matches more the uh, Starfield, uh, Starfield motif that they had going on for those original black box games. If we take a look at the instruction manual, a lot of times Nintendo instruction manuals, if they were for the more uh, top tier games like uh, Mario or Zelda were in color, but this one uh, is just in black and white. Talks a little bit about how to play. Stages and characters, the different cars. And then important tips on the use of the red-blue 3D glasses. Please limit continuous play to approximately 15 minutes. During 3D play, if you feel your eyes are becoming tired, discontinue play until your eyes are completely rested. Hmm, where have we seen that before? The 3DS, maybe? Or the Virtual Boy? Yeah, Nintendo has been trying to get 3D uh, visuals into its games for years. And uh, obviously it's been able to do so with varying degrees of success. With these 3D glasses, the Virtual Boy, not so much. The 3DS, yeah, pretty much. The 3DS is very popular. And now with the uh, new 3DS uh, coming out this year, 2015, the stereoscopic 3D is supposed to be much improved. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But back in the 80s, these anaglyphic uh, 3D glasses were all we had. Taking a look at the rest of what's in the box, we have the obligatory Nintendo Power subscription here. So this was 1987. Gone was the Nintendo Fun Club newsletter, and in its place, uh, Nintendo Power. And here's the actual game pack itself. Rad Racer. Would go directly into your Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, they crammed a lot of things into this box here. They had the poster, Nintendo Power, only one manual. This is the manual that, uh, that was given with the game. I have a feeling this may have been a misprint or something like that. But they tried to classify this as a sports series game. So I'm not sure in which editions, if this was first or if this was the second manual. But you'd only get one version of the manual. And then, of course, you'd get the baggie and the 3D glasses. Now, if we compare all that, the size of the package, quite a bit of difference between the uh, American NTSC and the uh, Japanese NTSC version. So let's take a look. They were mentioning 3D all over the place. And the only place I can find mention of 3D is kind of on the cover here. It says 3D. It doesn't give any indication that there are any glasses included with it, though. So let's take a look and see what we have. We'll open up the top. You can see there's a little plastic uh, retainer tray in there. See the game pack in its bag. Have a little bit of a warning card. The instruction manual. And then, of course, the game itself. But, uh... Hmm. No 3D glasses. And that's because this particular game, or at least 3D games on the Famicom, didn't use the 
red and blue anaglyphic 3D glasses that we got here in the United States. And that's because by the time this game was ported over to the US, it was starting to become apparent that the Famicom 3D system was not very popular. It was not garnering favor uh, among Nintendo fans. I'm not sure uh, the difference between the 3D visuals that uh, this whole 3D system was able to provide over the uh, glasses here, but uh, that's something we're going to be taking a look at in my next video where I show you some gameplay of both Highway Star and Rad Racer. But uh, in the remainder of this, uh, this particular video, I'm going to be showing you the 3D system, and we're going to finish taking a look at Highway Star, the Famicom version of the game. So this is uh, the game pack. This is a, uh, I believe it's a, a one meg game. Take a look at the instruction manual. Looks like this one's going to be uh, monochromatic as well. Very small. Got an outline of a track here. A lot of text, the story. How to use the Famicom controller with it. Because you did use the hardwired Famicom controllers. Scene, champion, Technique, stage, and then more stages. So pretty much about the same information that you would get uh, in the US version of the instruction manual. Just a little bit in a more condensed and less graphic fashion. So in order to see the 3D visuals uh, in this particular Japanese version, you would use the 3D system instead of the 3D glasses like in its US counterpart. And you could actually turn on or off the 3D visuals. Again, I wonder where we've seen that before. 3DS, I'm looking at you. Uh, by hitting the select button. By hitting the select button on your controller, you would be able to turn the 3D on or off. So here I have my Famicom. Of course, the game would be inserted in the top just like so. You'd use your Famicom controller to race. Left and right steers. Up and down changes uh, your station on your radio. Start is to pause, I believe. And I think they probably would have assigned the radio to select if it weren't already mapped to turning the 3D on or off. So what that would do is make the screen uh, totally change colors. I believe it would basically go almost black except for the red and blue um, outlines of the images. And then somehow uh, that would translate using uh, your glasses to uh, 3D. So let's take a look and see uh, this whole 3D system and why uh, Nintendo thought that was the way to go, at least in Japan, over these uh, red and blue 3D glasses. So let's take a look at the package here. Open her up on the side. Looks like we have a box and a bag. I'll pull the bag out first. So it looks like these are the glasses. A little bit of a retention piece there. Glasses are in a bag. And wow, these are some uh, pretty hefty glasses. It's like you got a little bit of a film on them to protect the, uh, the lens. And a little piece that would go on your forehead along with a, a headband strap to secure it to your face. Looks like this wire would uh, attach to the system in some way, which we'll be going through. Looks like it gets fed under the band there on that clip. If we take a look, yeah, there's like this padded rubber part here that would rest against your forehead. This is uh, where you would take a look through the glasses. And uh, I believe the way this would work is while these red and blue glasses would filter out images based on their red or blue outlines, uh, somehow uh, being connected to the system it would work in conjunction with the game and actually turn on or off shutters in the left and the right eyepiece to create uh, the illusion of 3D graphics. So the way that this interfaced uh, with the system, looks like uh, through some sort of a headphone connector. And the way you would get that connected to your Famicom was with the use of what's in this box here, I believe. Here's a little bit of a diagram about how, that, how all that was supposed to work. 
There were cartridge-based games that wor uh, worked with the 3D system, and then there were disk system games that worked with the 3D system. So it's showing you how to put your game in using either the cartridge or the disk. And then here's this little adapter here that plugs into the EXT port on your Famicom. And if you wanted to use a controller other than the two hardwired controllers that the Famicom came with, there was a little uh, through port there so that you could connect your, uh, your controller through that port uh, and use it with the 3D system as well. So your 3D system or the adapter for it would plug into the EXT port on the Famicom and then you would plug uh, that 3.5 millimeter plug into the adapter. And it looks like there's two ports on the adapter. So maybe uh, they had in the works or actually did release some two-player 3D games where two people could be wearing these, uh, these uh, goggles and be playing a game at once. So that's how you're supposed to do it. These are the instructions in Japanese uh, further detailing the procedure here and it looks like it's telling you a little bit of the specifics about how it actually works and uh, it's all in Japanese so sadly I won't be able to read any of that to you but that's a little bit of a diagram about how this uh, shutter system is supposed to work and then basically the diagrams aside it's telling you everything uh, that you're supposed to have received in the box there's another version of that diagram basically just text telling you how to use it so let's take a look and see uh, how that adapter is supposed to work in this box here. So I'm going to use my straight edge to try to open the box without damaging the flaps. I'll try the other side. There we go. It looks like this is the part that's supposed to plug into the EXT port on the Famicom. And it also has the uh, throughput there, the Nintendo logo, really nice. And then this is the actual adapter that bears a striking resemblance to the, uh, the RAM cart for the, uh, the disk system. It's got the same little uh, three ridges there, that motif. And this says su, Sukopu? Scope, scope. Oh, okay, so they're calling the glasses a scope, I think. So you got the player one and the player two scope or glasses input. So let's give this a, a dry run of how you would hook it up. It's going to depend uh, a little bit on which version of the Famicom you have. Of course, the uh, basic idea remains the same. I'm going to put my Model 1 Famicom on the table and then next to it my redesigned Famicom AV. Now the main difference between these two is the location of the EXT port. The EXT port for the Model 1 is on the front. Remove the little cover. And then the EXT port for the AV is on the side here. So that's where you would plug in any sort of uh, controller that was uh, different or you know for other purposes than the hardwire controllers that came with it. The uh, zapper or the beam gun would plug into there and various other uh, third-party controllers would as well. So uh, basically to do my footage later on when I do my next uh, Let's Play video for this I'll be using my Famicom AV because I can get a better picture out of it. So we'll use the Famicom AV for this demonstration. Go ahead and plug uh, this into the side there. And if I wanted to use a different controller other than uh, the standard NES controllers, I could do that. Of course, only a controller that was available in Japan because we never had that in the United States. And then basically, we take our glasses and plug them into the adapter like so. So, kind of a convoluted system to see 3D graphics. So, when I take a look at this uh, a few days from now, I'm really hoping that uh, the 3D graphics uh, using the 3D system are significantly improved over the 3D glasses from uh, Rad Racer, just these uh, red and blue ones. 
I do uh, understand that for you know reasons of it being uh, kind of a clunky system, uh, that uh, this was not popular. This 3D system was not popular in Japan. Eventually, they discontinued it, and uh, I think that's why uh, Rad Racer got the uh, red and blue uh, 3D glasses treatment instead of this uh, this whole shutter treatment. Uh, the Sega Master System also had a very similar uh, 3D system. I'll show it to you here. Now, I don't have a Sega Master System, but what I do have is a Sega Genesis with the power base converter. And the power base converter here was basically just an adapter that would interface with the cartridge slot on the Sega Genesis so that you could play Master System games. And the Master System games would plug into this slot up here. For all intents and purposes, now this is a Sega Master System instead of a Sega Genesis. You can, of course, even use Sega Master System controllers with it because they share the same uh, connectors as the Genesis. But one nice thing about the uh, Sega Master System is that in addition to standard cartridges, it also had a card slot right here. Some of the uh, uh, Sega Master System games were not on cartridges, but were on cards. And you could slide them in right here, a separate uh, port. And uh, the 3D system for the uh, Sega Master System used this port here. So if I wanted to play a 3D game, like Maze Hunter 3D, for example here, See Maze Hunter 3D, a 3D cartridge. Just take my game out of the box, stick it in the cartridge slot, and then in order to get uh, Sega's 3D glasses, which look similar to the uh, Famicom 3D glasses, to interface with the system here, you can see it uses the same 3.5 millimeter uh, adapter. All you would need is this adapter that came with. So it does need an extra piece, like the Famicom version, but uh, it's a little bit uh, smaller of a setup. And this would actually interface right with the card slot right here. And it looks a little strange on this uh, power base converter, but this fit a little bit better uh, with the uh, exterior design of the actual Sega Master System itself. But the same idea here, glasses input. Looks like they never planned for two-player 3D games. You only have one input, unlike the two on the Famicom. But uh, these are the same deal. These are active shutter 3D glasses, just like the, uh, the Famicom. However, they seem to be a little bit uh, more simple in their design. If we take a look at the two right here. The Famicom version is definitely a bit clunkier, mainly due to this part that was to rest against the player's forehead. And I'm not sure if that really makes a whole bunch of difference uh, with comfortability, but uh, this is more like a mask because it straps onto your, to the back of your head. And these are more like uh, glasses here because they have the earpieces. It looks like they had some sort of uh, way, maybe this is to feed the cord through, have it go through the back right here so it's going down more on your back and not hanging down right in front of your face. But uh, there is no elastic band with these. They just use, uh, they just use uh, the, uh, the ear pieces right here. So that's the Sega 3D system. But of course we're more interested in the Famicom 3D system. I just wanted to bring out the uh, Sega Master System one for comparison. Both companies didn't support these peripherals for very long because it wasn't very, uh, wasn't very successful, wasn't very popular. And maybe that's due to the peripheral itself or to the uh, paltry 3D graphics uh, that it was able to produce. And that's what I'm interested in. I want to see uh, just how good these 3D, uh, 3D effects are with this glasses system versus just the red and blue that we got here in the United States. So in my next video, I'm going to be taking a look at Rad Racer and Highway Star side by side. You're not going to be able to see the 3D effect, but you can see uh, what they do to the on-screen graphics to try to produce the 3D effect. So please be looking forward to that video. See you guys soon.